G'day, how you doing? Adam Williams here from Easy Way Photography. What we're going to do tonight, the third lesson, the third evening, we're going to run through essentially everything that we already learned in the first two evenings, but we're going to apply it to a more traditional, more natural style landscape edit post-process this time around. This image here, take a look here. This is the before image, the one we'll be working on. You can find the download link in the description of this video if you want to follow along. But we're going to transform it from something pretty ordinary like this to roughly something like that, okay? Using the same process that we learned over the previous two nights. So if you do want to follow along, pause the video now, download the file, open it into Photoshop, and we'll get started. Here we are, we all should have that same file open and we're going to walk through everything that we learned in the first two evenings. So initially we're going to be doing file correction. Let's start with color correction. Command or control J. Command on a Mac, control on a PC and J. That gives us that duplicate layer there. If we double click on the text where it says layer one, we can call this color correct. Now, I don't normally name my layers, but just in the beginning so we know what everything is, it's probably not a bad idea, I suppose. Moving over to the image menu, down to adjustments here, over, down to match color. This is a little bit of a secret hidden menu, but it does a great job of color correcting our files. Click the neutralize checkbox just here, and you can see that did a really good job there of removing the blue. One second, there we go, before, after, really neutralized, color corrected that image, really beautiful. Okay, let's straighten the horizon. Click on the crop tool or press C for crop. We won't run through all the tools this time because that's in the first video. You can jump back to that first video. The links to the video one and two are also in the description of this particular video. Click on the straighten icon, the little builder's level here, up in the top. Um, tool panel there and click and hold the mouse on one side and we just drag that out line it up perfectly nice and parallel and let go and Photoshop will get that and automatically rotate that for us we'll just tweak that a little bit click OK perfect color correct straighten horizon the next step would normally be dust removal now I can't see any obvious dust spots in this one, and I didn't place any fake ones in there this time. Um, but once again, the dust removal technique is in that first video. Let's move on to auto curves. We'll skip the dust. If I spot one, we can take care of it later. Auto curves. We move down to the little black and white circle, right down in the bottom right corner of the screen here. Click on there, you'll see all our adjustment layers. Click on curves. And all we're going to do is press the auto button, top right of the properties panel here. Click that. This will automatically adjust the contrast and the brightness of our image. Now, that's pretty good as we turn that on and off there via the little eyeball icon. However, if we hold down option on a Mac or alt on a PC and click auto again, we get the full auto color correction options and we'll just flick through looking for the most pleasing one that's heading in the direction that we want to go. It's the top one here for me, enhance monochromatic contrast. We can also click snap neutral midtones and see if that makes an improvement. It does absolutely nothing. Let's just leave it off, click OK. Often it will uh, give you another option, click OK. Okay, look at that. Big improvement, big head start to our workflow. That's the file correction stage all done and dusted. Let's move into the processing. Now, as we spoke about yesterday, for me, the processing, I like to highlight and make as obvious as possible the subject or the reason we took the camera out in the first place. So the most interesting elements in your photograph, we can make them more obvious and more interesting by adding more light, more color, more contrast because those elements light color contrast or more of those elements are attractive to the human eye and then the surrounding areas we might do the opposite we might darken or remove a little bit of light 
we might reduce the contrast and we might even reduce saturation, which will in turn help to boost the interest level around that central subject there. So what we're going to do first is we're going to add a little bit of light into our subject, which will help it really stand out. The way we do that, move down to our black and white cookie again, select curves because curves does all of our lightening, darkening and contrast adjustments. And to lighten that central area, just one point in the middle of our properties graph here and push diagonally up to the left a little bit, not too far, you know, about that far, let's say. Perfect. Now, for those of you that didn't see the layer and masking video, I'll quickly run over that again. So our adjustment layers are all found, as I said, down here. And, and within this workflow, I only really use two or three of these adjustment layers regularly and that makes the workflow really really simple to get really really great results so we're going to be using a curves layer and we've applied that adjustment brightening up the entire image as you can see if i turn that on and off it's currently brightening the entire image now that's because the layer mask here which is this little white box is white and when the layer mask is white or or let's call it clear when the layer mask is clear We'll call it, sorry, let me start again a little bit there. The layer mask, let's visualize that as a window. And when the window is clear or white, same thing, you can see through the window and that allows the adjustment to flow through the window and affect all of the image below. So currently the window is completely clear. So that's allowing the entire adjustment layer right through the window and as you can see, affecting the entire image below. However, if we press Command or Control I, so Command I on a Mac, Control I on a PC, it will invert that window to black, black the window out. So we can't see anything through that window. Now this is interesting because you can see the adjustment, the curves layer is still active up in the panel up here. But if we turn it on and off, it's currently not doing anything. And that's because the window is black and the adjustment is not being allowed to come through. Now, if we grab a brush, B for brush, and we'll just quickly set this brush up, 30% opacity for now, 50% flow, 0% smoothing, absolutely perfect. Okay, and if we click on the brush menu here, we just want that first brush there, it's called the soft round brush, and making sure the hardness there is on zero. Just coming down to our brush panel, this little palette here, the brush palette, let's call it, not the panel, palette. And you'll see a big white square and a, and a biggish black square icon. If that's not black and white, you can click on the default symbol here, the smaller white and black square, and that will switch the bigger icon back to the default of pure black and pure white, which is exactly what we want 100% of the time. We only ever paint with a black or a white brush in Photoshop. Adding color, we'll talk about that later in a, in a later video, but we still do that with a black or a white brush. And to switch between the black and white brush, we have this little double arrow icon. But we want a white brush because what we're going to do is we're going to clean the black window and make it white in specific areas to allow the adjustment through. So we want to just brighten up our subject so if we click and drag and let go, click and drag and let go and do that four or five times, you know, maybe six times, what you'll see is if I turn that on and off now, can you see how it's only affecting that small section? Just affecting through here. And if we look at the layer mask by holding down Option or Alt and click on the layer mask, you can see We've cleaned up the window, allowing the effect to come through in this white section. We've left the window black, which is blocking the effect out here and here. And you can see there's some gray transitions where it's nicely, smoothly allowing a little bit of the effect to come through. Okay, so let's continue on. Let's go and we'll add a little bit more light into our subject here, more specifically onto the faces of the rock. So down to our curves layer. And much the same, add a curves layer, one point in the middle, drag up, that'll do. Command or Control I, because at the moment the adjustment's affecting the entire image, as you can see. 
but Command or Control I will block that out so it's not affecting anything. And if we zoom in a little bit there, again with our white brush, 30% opacity, 50% flow, we'll just paint roughly over the surfaces of these rocks to give them a little bit more visual impact. And we just use a nice big brush. Paint outside the lines is always a good option to hide your working in Photoshop. Like paint a long way outside the lines because otherwise what you'll get is like light bleed or haloing from trying to stay within the lines and that never looks very good. So if we use a nice big brush, paint outside the lines, absolutely perfect. Okay, so you can see now that curves adjustment, it's just affecting that small section there. Excellent. Okay, let's go and darken the edges of the frame, which will help draw the attention into the center. So once again, curves layer does lightening, darkening, and contrast. One point in the middle. And again, we roughly drag down the same amount each time. About that far. Doesn't have to be super accurate. Once again, the adjustment layer is affecting the entire image. If we press Command or Control I, it's now affecting none of the image, but with our white brush, we can bring it back into the edges where we want it. I'm just going to press Command or Control minus, give myself a little bit more space here. And always I click, drag, and let go. So doing multiple brush strokes, rather than clicking and scribbling in one go, I find it's better to click and drag and let go, and then click and drag, let go. Okay, that's not bad, but I just want a little bit darker in that patch there to balance the darkness on the edge, if you like. But you can again see, currently we're just affecting those edge areas. So we're going to darken again. Curves, same again, one point in the middle, drag down, roughly the same amount. Command or Control I, invert to black, same white brush. We're just going to try and get a little bit of sort of balance in the darkness. That's looking pretty nice. Maybe a little bit there too. Looks perfect. Let's add some contrast. Now remember we always do our brightness, then contrast, and lastly our color, because in Photoshop the color is affected by the brightness and contrast adjustment. So it's better off doing that third, so that we don't have to do it twice essentially. Contrast. Again, a curves layer. This time we put two points. One about 25% in from the top, one about the same from the bottom. The bottom one goes down a fraction, top one goes up a fraction. Nice little contrast boost there. Once again, we press Command or Control I to invert. Same brush, and just gonna paint that a little bit across the middle, and a little bit in the sky here. Perfect. Let's move on to color now. Now what I'm seeing with color, there's some weird blue corners, mainly here and here. I want to remove them first of all. So we're going to go to a hue saturation layer. If we click this little hand icon up next to where it says master menu, I can move out and click on the trouble spot and watch this rainbow slider. It will make a selection, a color selection, okay? So based on where I clicked in that blue, it's now allowing me to desaturate that area without touching the other areas. Can you see that? If I turn that on and off, can you see how it's just removed that pesky blue? Now, I kind of want some of the blue in the water though, but not up in the sky. So again, Command or Control I to invert, B for brush, and we'll just paint multiple strokes in that corner there. A little bit over there, we'll take a little bit of the blue out of there. So we've managed to leave a bit of that blue in the water, but remove the blue from the outside edges. Let's give the sky and our subject a little bit of a color boost. Hue saturation, turn that up a fraction. 15 points, looks great. In fact, I like that. I'm gonna leave that across the entire image, just leave the mask white. And we're almost done, but I'm going to show you one more technique that I haven't shown you yet. It's called solid color in soft light, and it's a way of adding color and adding mood and atmosphere to our images. Back down to the adjustment layer icon, click on solid color, and I'm going to choose, look normally, I'll be honest, normally I choose a warm orange-ish color and click in the middle here, 
and we run with that. But for my sunrise sunset shots, lately I've been really loving the purplish colour. I don't know, it's, it's, it's been working pretty well for me. So click OK on that purple. Doesn't have to be accurate, somewhere in the purple between red and blue. Click in the middle for now, click OK. That was a bit of a guess. We'll change the blend mode. It says normal here at the top of the layer stack. Change the blend mode to soft light. Looks pretty good already actually, doesn't it? Before, after. However, it was a bit of a guess, so we'll double click back in. And now we can just click around, see what looks nice. Now I quite like something like that. Okay, absolutely beautiful. Let's zoom in. Let's take a look at where we started from using the exact same workflow that we created that dark and gloomy image yesterday. We've now managed to create or transform something that was pretty ordinary. Let's take a look. Pretty ordinary, I think you'll agree. Okay, not my proudest moment as a raw file, that's for sure. Um, bit underexposed, you might say. However, look what we've managed to do with this very simple workflow and transform it into something absolutely gorgeous. Well, maybe not absolutely gorgeous, but it's much, much better than it was before, I think you'll agree. Now, a couple of things. If you're loving this workflow, uh, there's an offer in the description as well where you can get the entire five-step workflow, the Essentials Photoshop workflow, for just $1. So if you're interested in that, have a look in the description. The details and link will be up there. Other than that, the previous two videos are in there as well. Make sure to follow the page or subscribe the page as well if you're enjoying these videos because there'll be many, many more coming over the next weeks, months, years. Thanks again for watching along. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.